Hello and welcome to Racing Game Rambles. I'm Martin and I'm joined by Kevin. Hello everyone. So as the name suggests, this is a podcast where we will ramble incessantly about racing games. As this is our first episode and the start of the year, I thought it would be a good time to talk about our most anticipated racing games of 2021 and beyond. I mean, 2021 could be a really good year for racing game fans. We've got the return of several big name franchises, such as Need for Speed, hopefully Gran Turismo, and possibly Forza Motorsport. So I should point out some of these games don't actually have uh, confirmed release dates of 2021, but fingers crossed that it's still good to look ahead of how the roadmap for racing games is looking at the moment. Anyway, I guess we should start with uh, Destruction All-Stars, since, well, I mean, at the time of recording, uh, this game is actually out in just three days, I believe. Yeah, <laughs> very, very uh, soon upon us. This was a game that we didn't know anything about for a long, long time, wasn't it? And only recently they've had this sort of reveal of all the game modes and stuff, so we can really get our first proper good look at what lies in store. Were you impressed with the gameplay, the different game modes on offer? Yeah, I mean, Sony, they've been very, shall we say, shy about the marketing for this game. Yes. Um, it's strange. Some games they yeah they really do make a big mar- marketing push, but this game I f- feel like they've kind of left it to die a bit. Um, yeah, there is there's been no gameplay whatsoever um, until just the week of release, and obviously originally it was also going to be a full price game, and then they suddenly made the uh, switch to uh, yeah, free for PlayStation Plus users, which I think was a good move. Am I impressed by the game modes on offer? Um, Yes and no, I'd say. I think there is, there's some, they, they do sound very fun, but you can tell that it's designed primarily as an online game. Yeah. Um, I was actually surprised that they offer single player at all because I just oh, yeah, assumed yeah. this was a multiplayer only game because it, it reeks of it, doesn't it? It's sort of a cross between Wreckfest and, and Onrush or something. You know, it really has that. Oh, it's, kind of, it's a bit of Rocket League. Vibe. It's a bit of. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's a bit of Rocket League. It's a bit of Twisted Metal. Mm. It's a bit of, dare I say, Fortnite. Not my favourite franchise. But it has but... its own flavour in a way that there's a lot of on-foot gameplay, which was uh, yeah, quite surprising. I like... Yeah, I knew this was an element of the game, but I wasn't expecting to see so much on-foot action in the recent reveal. So it's, it's it sort of has its own flavour, doesn't it? Yeah, I think that, that, does, that does help it stand out a bit, because otherwise it would have been just a pure Destruction Derby slash Twisted Metal clone, wouldn't it? Mm. Um, so it's uh, it's been developed by uh, Lucid Games, and I believe some of the people on that team were responsible for Project Gotham Racing. So, th- yeah, there is some good pedigree on that team. But I believe this is their first major console release. I think they've done... Did they do f- mobile games, or was it... Did they believe serve a free-to-play title on PlayStation before? I can't quite remember. <laughs> I honestly don't know about that. But um, like you said earlier, I mean, it's it's the sort of game that they were going to charge you £70 for it. I don't see £70 no, no, pounds no. worth of game here. So no. I think it was the only option really, wasn't it, to uh, put it on to PS Plus or you could maybe sell it budget price, maybe 25 or mm. 30 is probably a budget price these days with games <laughs> up to £70. But yeah, it's, it's it gives it a chance, doesn't it? It gives it a platform, much like Rocket League was given uh, PS Plus back in April 2015, mm. I think it was. Uh, one of the games I've probably played more than anything else. So it, it has that platform to go on and really bring in numbers, which it really does need. And no doubt there'll be a microtransactions to bring in the cash. Uh, but it has a chance now, whereas before I didn't think it would, would have much chance, uh, 70 pounds, certainly. No, I think if it was a launch title as well, it would have been overshadowed a bit by all the other big profile games that came out and established franchises. You had Spider-Man, you had Dirt 5, and you had this weird little game called Destruction All Stars. <laughs> yeah, just... Dirt Five is the only sort of competitor, I guess. Um, it, it kind of has its its own little thing going on now, and and not much to rival it, you know. So, the fact that it's coming out early in the generation, I think, it can only be a good thing as well for it. Yeah, I think I think it's the right thing to do. It really does, like you said, it really gives it that platform to you know, be really seen by potentially millions of players. Whereas if they just released it at the door on launch day. I don't think it would have got the same amount of traction. Mm. Um, and it, it has that sort of, not intended. <laughs> yeah. It has that sort of uh, Fortnite uh, aesthetic to it as well, doesn't it? So it's really I'm trying not, to cash in on modern I'm not, trends. I'm not keen on the visual style, I'll be honest. No, I mean, yeah, it's, it's those obnoxious characters that we're seeing mm. more and more now. Similar with, it's, it's very much uh, sort of Onrush looking as well. I was thinking well, that, it? yeah, it does. I do get the same kind of vibe to it in that sense. Yeah, with the... 
with all the characters. Yeah, they've all got their own backstory as well, apparently. Really? Oh, that'll be fascinating. Yeah, I mean, you can even, <laughs> I think you can even, <laughs> even pay microtransactions for it. Oh, goodness. Well, uh, you know, looking at the sort of car deformation and stuff, it looks okay. Nothing sort of on the levels of Wreckfest, but then nothing is, is it? We keep saying that, but... I'm a little bit worried about the game modes. Is there enough variation between them? And and that's kind of how I felt a bit with Onrush. Mm. Um, you know, you have like, you've got like a Carnado mode, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, probably inspired by Sharknado, the, the name. Yes. And you've got a, a game mode called Stockpile. And essentially they're similar things where you collect a number of gears and then you sort of cash them in. Um, so it's... There's a sort of it risk like a, element. Kind of, like a capture the flag kind of mode. Yeah, it's a kind of play on that, isn't it? Uh, but they're, they're very similar modes, and, and that's two of the four modes uh, mm. that game's going to launch with. So I do wonder if there's enough there to really keep things fresh. Yeah, I think my, my worry with the game is really does it have does it have the longevity? Because um, mm. like, I don't know about you, but even with in Wreckfest, with in the kind of destruction derby modes, they don't hold my attention for that long normally, even if there are a lot of different game modes they're still it's still all arena based i personally yeah. liked it more if there are some more traditional racing in it as well mm. um, but that's also not what they're aiming for i do wonder about the longevity of it but if it's a free game i can't really complain mm. i mean with rocket league they kept innovating uh, new modes yeah uh, new cars and stuff i feel like a game like this has to do uh, adopt a similar model you know to keep things fresh keep people coming back always have something new in the works um but assuming that's you know rocket league got incredible numbers so if this is going to be supported long term i have to you know imagine it'd be there have to be enough numbers for them to do that uh, bring in enough money through mm. microtransactions and whatnot that it's hard, it's really hard to judge though because i mean when rocket league came out i think nobody predicted it would be the the runaway success that it has been you know mm. yeah, yeah. obviously the game uh, that came out before that i'm not going to say its full name unless you could remember it supersonic acrobatic rocket powered battle cars <laughs> and it was quite janky it was quite janky the <laughs> controls were, were were nothing like rocket league it was very um mm. uh jerky controls and so really refined that for rocket league uh mm. but like you say it came out of nowhere uh and i became a massive fan of it uh yeah how many hours I find have you I played have to... rocket league again oh it's, it's it's probably getting on for three thousand hours now it's oh crazy my God. <laughs> yeah Do, can I you see keep... yourself playing destruction all stars for three thousand hours i mean if it's good yes <laughs> if it, but it really has to be good uh so it's got to have the smooth controls it's got to have fun gameplay elements um mm. balancing yes. you know between a free class of cars uh it has to be good it has to be yeah. competitive if there's modes where players can come together and work towards a common goal that's always uh, addictive for me yeah team play elements um i'm not quite sure what sort of team play elements they have here i know there's like a last one standing mode which is obviously all individual play but um i'm assuming there's there's team stuff here as well uh, which would be interesting. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I, I, you also wonder how much depth there is in the game as well. I mean, in the recent you know, gameplay reveal, they, they did talk a bit about how some cars have different attributes to others. So some are stronger than others and can take, take more damage. Others are more nimble. Very much like on Rush again, isn't it? Uh, you yeah. have the, the yeah. small nimble ones, you've got the big bruisers. Yeah. On Rush was a PlayStation Plus title as well, incidentally, after it flopped, sadly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I don't know, it, it looks okay, it looks fun. Uh, it'd be interesting to see how it all comes together. Is it, uh, you know, being in a vehicle, is that the only way to play it? Are you very vulnerable when you come out of the vehicles? How is that sort yeah. of balanced? You know, things like that. There's a lot of things they have to work out, but I'm glad that the, the game sort of got delayed so they can refine it further. Um, maybe it, it wasn't quite up to scratch when it was supposed to come out originally. So, you know... Let's hope it's good, eh? We won't have long to find out, so we'll be getting on that game shortly, and uh, hopefully it'll be good. Yeah. What do you think of the defamation, the damage? I know it's a big thing in your Yes, I mean, that's eyes. the most important aspect for a racing game for me, to be honest. <laughs> um, after spending at least 200 hours on Wreckfest, I've mm. destroyed many cars in that game. Yeah, I think it... I think it has... Um, it has good looking defamation, I would say. Yeah, the cars buckle and crunch, and um, yeah, I think I've, panels do seem to fall off as well. It's it's not as um, it's not as in depth as Wreckfest, that's for sure. 
Mm. Uh, there's quite a lot of spectacle to the crashes. You know, there's lots of debris, lots of sparks, lots of glass flying. So I like that aspect. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I'll have to wait and see. I mean, it does just make, to be honest, watching it, it just makes me want a next generation upgrade for Wreckfest more than anything. <laughs> yes, that would be nice. And the, and the other problem, of course, with the game is not many people own a PlayStation 5 at the moment. So that kind of limits its audience in some ways. It does, as, doesn't it? As, I mean, as they're so hard to come, as they're so hard to get at the moment. Yeah, you could almost delay this for another six months, couldn't you? I mean, mm. I can't even at this rate. I'm, I'll be hard pressed to see everyone that wants a PS5 to get one before even the end of the year. No. The demand is so high. The pandemic is probably pushing that demand even further than it would have been. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they didn't get out as many as they perhaps would have liked to. There's still a fair amount of consoles out there, but. As you say, it's the scalpers that are picking them up even before they go on to general sale. Mm. Uh, it was revealed recently, wasn't it? So oh, they're ridiculous. using some sort of algorithm there it's, mm. to do I it mean, before. Destruction All Stars is going to be available for free to PlayStation Plus members, for, um, I believe, for two months. Uh, I think it's it's available. I think it's up till uh, April the fifth. Uh, they take it off, so you've got you know, you've got a couple of months there to, mm. to get it. So that's, that's that's generous, isn't it? So it allows yeah. people to. It's not just one in. month like the the usual uh, mm. PlayStation Plus games. Yeah. It's, uh, so I, I, I suppose we could say we're cautiously optimistic, but we're not exactly blown away. It. it looks like my kind of game. Lots of smashing things up. I'm a sucker for, for that. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So in terms of PlayStation Five games, then also on the subject of PlayStation Five, we also have Gran Turismo Seven to look forward to supposedly <laughs> coming out in the second half of 2021 but is that really going to happen polyphony don't have the best track record when it comes to timeliness i mean how long has it been now since gt sport when did that come out um Ooh, 2017 i guess the more important question is um this is the first numbered entry in the grand Turismo series obviously since grand Turismo six and that 13. came out there you go. That came out in mm. on the last, uh, sorry, on the for the PlayStation Three generation. Yeah, yeah, amazing. I mean, a whole generation without a proper it's GT crazy. title is is unbelievable. And we missed out on other core sort of racing games as well uh, last generation. So mm. I, mean, I wasn't a massive fan of Grand Turismo Sport to be honest, because it just didn't feel like a proper true Grand Turismo title because it was so mm. focused on the online element. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I personally, I'm, I'm not. I don't, I don't really play esports or online multiplayer too much. I just wanted that core Gran Turismo experience again, where you just buy a cheap Japanese hatchback and tune, oh, yes. it, tune it to 2,000 horsepower and then sell it on the used car market. That's what Gran Turismo fans want. Oh, and absolutely. By the looks of it, Gran Turismo 7 will deliver that experience again, but not mm. before there's been three Forza Motorsport titles in between before, <laughs> which is a shame. Yeah. But, um, I mean, both of us, I think it's fair to say, are long-term fans of Gran Turismo have been there since the very early days mm -hmm. um when you first when you saw the reveal trailer did did you did it bring back that that Gran Turismo feeling again the, mem the memories of the old games yeah especially when they started like initially they showed the trailer and then you've got the sort of uh, game menus they showed after and mm. when I saw that main menu it, it just brought back GT4 for yeah. me you know with all the different the world, icons. The world map and everything else. yeah 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 you have like um GT Auto and a proper tuning shop as well. But then you've got um, GT Sport elements as well, like uh, the museum, I think it is, or no, Brand Central and the um, Escapes yeah. mode as well. So it's like a amalgamation of the two. So uh, if it's anything as comprehensive as GT4's career mode, then it could be amazing. And like you say, we just want to get a little Mazda Demio or whatever <laughs> and, and uh, slap a stage three or four turbo on it and, and have right. fun that way because that's what it was all about, wasn't it? It was those mm. early hours, those first 10 hours or whatever, that were always the most special in my opinion because you had oh, yes. you built an attachment, didn't you, to your little crappy Japanese K car and, and, and away you go. Yeah. Um, um, in terms of the trailer though, I mean, I was a little bit underwhelmed by same. the graphics yeah yeah thinking back uh nice shiny stuff going on 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 the uh, interiors and stuff but mm. it just felt a bit more like gt sport plus rather than a, a whole exactly generational right, actually, leap. yeah it just looked like a kind of upscale version of gt sport mm. but we have whether, to remember i don't know if it's because we haven't seen it in 4k and hdr though that's the only thing if it's anything like gt sport though when, if you remember when GT Sport got first revealed it, and, and, and continued to get revealed, it just got better and better looking, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Shinier and shinier. And eventually it looked amazing because it wasn't mm. amazing initially, if you remember. I'm hoping it's a similar story here 
Um, but we only have this one trailer, don't we? We, ha- we have little snippets yeah. of gameplay that we've already seen on this trailer. Um, but it's basically just the one trailer to date. And this was dating back sort of E3 time, wasn't it, last year? So yeah, It was during the PlayStation 5 reveal event, wasn't it? Mm. Uh, last summer. And yeah, they've not, they've not really said much about it since then. Um, it was initially... It's supposed to be early 21, wasn't it? And now it's gone into late 21. And you just feel that <laughs> Polyphony are up to their old tricks again. Are we going to get yeah. it this year? Who knows? I think it needs to come out this year, though, because it's just it's been such a long time since the last the last proper Grand Design game came out. Even GT Sport, that was quite late into the PlayStation 4's life cycle. And we didn't have any any form of Grand Turismo before, before then. Yeah. Mm. They kept adding to the campaign mode, didn't they, in GT Sport? But I'd sort of lost interest. Mm. Uh, I it mean, I will go back to it. tacked on. I don't know. Yeah. It, didn't, it wasn't the fully-fledged you know, Grand no. Turismo world experience that we've been wanting. I remember Kaz was saying that they was going to call it uh, GT7. I'm glad they didn't because there'd be a lot of black backlash from that. But I will get back to GT Sport. So it's been a while, but I will play through the campaign as a whole. Mm. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if, you, if it's possible to actually delete my save data, my whole account, and start afresh. That would be nice, but I'm not sure you can. Mm. Problem is GT Sport. The updates are so large, I'd probably run out of hard drive space. I can't play it. At least not online. Well, I, I did. I, I recently installed it on the, on the PS5, of course, and it was like 97 gigabytes GT Sport. So uh, that speaks volumes, doesn't it, for its uh, lengthly... Um... That makes you wonder how large GT7 is going to be. Yeah, I wonder. I yeah, wonder if they're going to incorporate... Game. Are they going to have like GT Sport mode within the game or will it be a separate release down the line and just have like the online mm. components? Well, sometimes some games they install the online multiplayer or just the campaign separately, depending on what you want. So... They could do that, perhaps. I don't know. Remember in Grand Turismo 5 when you had like premium cars and standard cars and they were just up for oh. GT4 cars? I'd just, like to think they've uh, started from scratch since then. Yeah, that was terrible, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, I mean, at one point I was for it because you get more vehicles, but then eventually I became against it um, mm. because it was... That's the thing, that with each number of Grand Turismo entry, you kind of have that expectation that there'll be hundreds and hundreds of cars to buy and collect. Yeah, um, I, I can't remember what the total car count of GT Sport was, but they did they did steadily increase it over time. But yeah. when it first came out, it was a bit disappointing. Mm. Yeah, it was, and it it, it was it's a very different vibe to the main GT titles, wasn't it? Because you had the uh, a lot of the original or all the original tracks were, were stripped out. Mm. Uh, we might have got one or two along the way, um, but we we expect GT Seven to give us the original tracks: High Speed Ring, Deep that's Forest Raceway. Enough, yeah, that's the, that's we the saw. Trial Mountain they showed case didn't they in the yeah. trailer so that, that pretty much tells you that we're back to where you know we want to be now with a proper numbered title giving you those old school vibes mm-hmm. tuning shops uh, classic mm-hmm. tracks uh, hopefully a plethora of cars There's obviously going to be more cars on top of what GT Sport had uh, and they're future proof aren't they the GT Sport cars are so well detailed you know they, they beat just about everything out there mm. uh, so that was a, a very good move from polyphony you know it's it's very much a case of dialing up the settings for the ps5 no doubt and, and we're going to get a load of cars uh, i just want to see more low powered cars that's that's sort of my bag personally where you don't really get much yeah. in gt sport but then it wasn't its vibe was it, it was all about the sort of motorsport vibe and yes. racing cars which sort of for me i much prefer the, the road cars on the whole uh, to racing cars i feel like they've got more personality they're obtainable you know anyone can drive a lot of these cars so mm-hmm. you have but that attachment no doubt we'll also have uh, lots of license tests to look forward to as well hopefully optional yes <laughs> i don't have great memories of some of those i, I think i golded um oh, was it gt6 some of them were pretty difficult i think they got easier in gt sport I oh i can't remember but uh, you know, it's, it seems like it's been far too long since uh, a proper title. So um, this way, is probably my second most anticipated title in the generation. Really? Mm. I'm also interested actually to see what they'll do with the uh, DualSense controller. Because, I mean, that has transformed some racing games on PlayStation 5. And being a first party title, you'd expect them to you know, really uh, get the best use out of it. Yeah, um, no doubt. Because Gratis has always played better on a steering wheel, but I mean, this could potentially be a good substitute for it. Because I don't know about you, but I, I don't, I'm not always in the mood to actually dig out the steering wheel and set it all up. And but I've never really enjoyed it that much on a controller, so yeah, this could obviously it won't, it won't be a replacement for a steering wheel, don't get me wrong. 
Mm. But uh, yeah, the, the dual touch control that really does um, yeah, it really simulates the surface of the of the road a lot uh, a lot more accurately than the old dual shock controller did. Mm. It will give you a better um, sense of how the car is behaving, I think. Yeah, we, I mean, we get a good sense of it at the moment, don't we, with, with WRC9 mm, on PS5. Uh, implementation of it on WRC9. Yeah, I mean, personally, I'd always favour a wheel over a controller, yeah. but um, absolutely, lots of people are going to be playing on the controller. It's, it's going to feel fantastic, no doubt. As you say, first-party title, it's going to be the best it can be. Um, I wonder if there's any rally sections in this game actually mm, um, it's true we don't know we, we don't actually know a lot about the game yet we only have the trailer to go on and the brief kind of synopsis they released but obviously you can expect 60 frames per second hdr 4k ray tracing you know it's going to be a, a an amazing visual showcase for the playstation 5 there's no doubt about it and you know hopefully the, the graphics will improve as we see more videos of it in the future yeah, it's just nice to have a, a proper Gran Turismo experience once again. It's just better late than never. Mm, yeah, and we've waited a long time, so it's got to be good, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I'd rather them delay it and, and have a proper campaign mode akin to what we've seen on GT2 or GT4 yeah. rather than sort of come out with something that could be underwhelming for the masses. It needs to hit hard, doesn't it, from the off Yes. Uh, to, to, to sort of bring people's faith back with them because a lot of people didn't play sport, quite simply. No. It just wasn't their thing, so... You know, a lot of people have been waiting um, eight years for this. You know, so it's, it's a lot of pressure on the developer to get it right. Yeah, that's the trouble. It does. It does. Obviously, the longer it takes to come out, the higher expectations are going oh, to be. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully, fingers crossed, it'll come out this year. Probably towards the end of the year, I would imagine. Mm. And um, at least sixty FPS, uh, which is what they've strived for in previous releases, but haven't always hit it. Uh, no. GT five, GT six. A bit sketchy on the frame rate at times, but Kaz was actually mentioning that he was interested in 120 frames and possibly even 240. Mm. Um, you know, I would take 60 checkable 4K, you know, yeah, day long. It's, it's, I'm happy with it's that more than enough. And mm. the problem is, once you get to 120 FPS, sometimes you know the, the visuals do have to then be sacrificed yeah, a bit, evident by Dirt 5, Dirt five recently, yes, exactly. yeah, which which. Didn't look brilliant even at 60, but uh, no. 120, it's a little bit a little bit rough, wasn't it? No, but I think we've got to the point now in, you know, we're at the generation now where 60 frames is standard. the gold standard now, which is nice. And it does it does improve the um, race to game experience. You know, it does make the, the cars feel a lot more responsive. Mm. I mean, some people are going to catch the difference. But, um, well, I mean, yeah, it's about the suspension, isn't it? Updating 60 times a second. It's so much easier to control. Um, so it's, it should actually be easier rather than harder, you know. Um, a lot of simulation games strive to be hard to, to, to sort of sort of uh, mm. check that simulation box when in actual fact we can all drive cars. It shouldn't yeah. be hard. And I think with 60 frames on the consoles, it can only get easier as well. So it's going to feel more natural. It's going to feel more realistic mm. and more satisfying ultimately. So it'd be, look, it'd be good to see that. 120 frames. I mean, my TV doesn't even output 120 frames. No, I, I don't have a 4K TV yet. You, you have to have a special 4K 120 uh, HDMI 2.1, I think it is. Um, mm. Not a lot of TVs have it. So it will become the standard um, in the future. But at the moment, a lot of people don't have 4K TVs even. So No, myself you know, included. You've got to get that sorted out, though. You've got to get yourself a 4K. I know. Even I know. just for Gran Turismo. Maybe this year. Maybe this year. I, I do normally get a new TV every time I get a new console. So. Mm. We'll yeah. see, we'll see. I mean, Gran Turismo is not the only game going back to its roots because we also have uh, a new Forza Motorsport title coming, obviously, for the rival Xbox Series X console. And again, though, like Gran Turismo, we don't really know an awful lot about it yet. We had the briefest of teaser trailers released uh, last year. Ah, the corkscrew. Mm. <laughs> Laguna Seca. They just kept showing the corkscrew over and over, didn't they? It's, uh, <laughs> it's quite uh, quite something, wasn't it? I mean, looking at the trailer, though, it, it does seem like it is going back to its roots and actually having more of an emphasis on motorsport. Yeah, there was mm. a lot of you know, thoroughbred racing cars on display. Um, yeah, yeah, so in some ways... Something it could that be... They've been banging on about it for quite a while now that they're trying to, like you say, go back to that motorsport simulation vibe mm. uh tire models suspension models uh, all these ways the, the inter uh, environment reacts to the, the track and the tires and different tire models and i mean they were speaking about this years ago with the early titles uh mm. and they've sort of gone away from that simulation focus probably since five onwards 
mm-hmm. you know, it, with a wheel, especially false motorsport is just a, a mess, quite simply. <laughs> you, you just can't control it. And if simulation steering setting on, it's even worse. Uh, you don't feel the weight of the car. It's too easy to slide out on the wheel. And, no, and even like... Of, they're going more for the mass audience, I think, in more recent titles. Yeah, yeah. Um, again, like Grand I mean, so Grand Turismo 7 is supposedly coming out in the second half of 2021. Yes, I keep saying supposedly because we don't trust polyphony. Um, but Forza Motorsport, they didn't even give an indication um, when it's coming out at all. I think a lot of people are expecting it to be almost a launch title for the Xbox Series X because traditionally, I think the last, well, for, for the most Spot 5 at least was a launch title for Xbox One. Yeah, yeah and that, was, um, that went well, didn't it? It was oh, very, very well. undercooked, wasn't it? Not a lot of content, <laughs> tracks and cars, but mm. even GT7 was a uh, rumored launch title for a while there. But yeah, I get the impression that they're, they're really overhauling the whole uh, system. Oh, yes, yeah, it's, it's almost... And mean... it's a case of it's ready when it's ready, which is a great thing, really, mm. for consumers. Oh, definitely. But the, the, the naming does suggest it is a complete reboot of the, the franchise, essentially. Mm. Yep. So I think it's going to be quite a long wait for that one. I, I, I would be very surprised if it comes out in 2021. Um, alternatively, however, there are rumours that uh, there's going to be a new Forza Horizon, well, Forza Horizon 5 coming out this year instead. Five, can you believe five, it? Five, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we know next to nothing about it. We don't know location. We don't know anything. But, I mean... They haven't even confirmed that there is another Forza Horizon in development, to my knowledge. Will it be, uh, you know, will it will it have a Xbox One release um, last gen? Possibly, I mean, yeah. I mean, um, I think Forza Horizon 2 came out on um, Xbox 360 and Xbox One, so definitely a possibility. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm assuming that'll be the, the case as well. Um, but, you know, they can update the game massively for, for the current gen consoles. So it will look, no doubt, a lot better. So they have that option. And obviously with the install base being what it is, you know, it's, it's all the more likely it will be cross-generational. But, you know, it's amazing what they did with uh, 3 and 4 visually mm. uh, as a technical piece. Oh, amazing incredible. technical accomplishment, yeah. I and mean, even yep. now, Forza Horizon 4 with the, the next-gen upgrades on Xbox Series X, mm. it, just, it, you know, it just looks incredible. Fully, you know, full open world running at 4K 60 frames is no small feat. So, obviously, Forza Horizon 5 can set the bar even higher. Well, mm-hmm. you know, very, very much looking forward to that. Obviously, I just hope they improve the overall progression in the game because oh, Forza yeah. Horizon does have a habit of handing you rather um, fast supercars quite near the start of the game sometimes. And hundreds of thousands of pounds as well mm. to spend we were so, saying how we love that experience in gran turismo of working your way up with a mm. you know cheap crummy hatchback tuning it up you know you could really get a good sense of progression there but i think that has been lost in recent thoughts of horizon titles so yeah um, it'd be nice if they offered the player uh, a choice wouldn't it like yeah. um between like a grind fest that we like <laughs> or the traditional model that they've gone with in, in recent couple of titles mm-hmm. or so uh, I just feel like a lot of the magic is lost, isn't it? Like you say, it's it's you're not earning those Ferraris and Lamborghinis. You're you're gifted them very early in the game, and you know once you drive those cars, you, you can't really go back to the slower ones. They don't you know you don't get that progression. Those medium uh, speed cars don't feel special compared to the early ones now because you've already driven the Lamborghinis exactly, yeah. and Ferraris and all sorts. So it's, it's, nice, it's nice to feel attached to your car, you know. Mm. I mean that's something that the test drive series has. Um, you know, just nailed, I think. Oh, speaking of which, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, one of our other most anticipated games then, hopefully in 2021, is of course Test Drive uh, Solar Crown. So this was announced last year, again, in a very uh, brief teaser trailer. Sadly, not a lot of information on this one, but you know, potentially this, this, yeah, this could be um, the new benchmark for open world racing games if they get it right, I think. Um, also, I know you're a very big fan of the Test Drive um, Unlimited series. Um, yeah, what, what were your thoughts on the reveal trailer? Because mm. I have to say, um, I actually knew about this game for quite some time before it was publicly mm. uh, made, you know, uh, announced. But yeah, it's, it's 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 this is my number one title now. Uh, mm-hmm. GT Seven is number two, and for yeah. I'm such a Gran Turismo fanboy, for it to be number two is something, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, like we we know, we don't even know the release window. We don't even know what platforms it's coming out for. Will yeah, it be? It was in, you surprisingly know, brief. Yeah. 
which suggests it's pretty early in development. So we have to we have to stress that it probably might not come out this year. No, it's a possibility it might not even come out next year. But we're we're holding on no. to hope. But I think the pandemic probably has put pay to to this year. Um, I think but, originally it probably it might have come out later this year if it wasn't for the pandemic. Perhaps they probably would have mm. shown. My guess is they probably would have shown more of it around E3 time this year. Yeah. Yeah, and then I, build up the, the hype for the release later in the year or early next year, possibly. But. Mm. They did speak of possibly showing more at Gamescom last year, which never happened. Ah, uh, yes. So the fact that they had the possibility of showing more suggests that maybe it's not as early as, as we fear in development cycle. But, you know, it's 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 called Solar Crown, which is a, a nod to the uh, competition in, in uh, Test Drive Unlimited 2, which itself dates back um, 2011 number two so it's 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 10 years ago pretty much wow. uh, which is incredible and and the original title i think it was 2008 so this is uh it was six of all it was was it six? Oh my goodness like it's an it's an old it's an oldie goldie isn't it um and you know what do we expect we expect obviously updated graphics updated physics they can use uh the physics from their sort of wrc underpinnings mm -hmm. um i mean they may well I imagine they'll sort of dumb it down slightly to make it a bit more accessible. Um, but on the whole, I think the tarmac model is pretty decent in WRC. So it, I think yeah. it'll translate well here. Uh, we just want, um, like you said before, with, with Gran Turismo, that, that car attachment, that car ownership attachment. Uh, no no so series does it better than Test Drive Unlimited. That sense of ownership, yeah. you know, just uh, you know, getting inside the car, going to the showroom, Having a browse, like mm. you could even, I love the fact you could just even wind down the window on when you're going on the drive. Just those and little the soft, details, the soft top as well, indicators, yeah, beeping the horn. You can even yeah. rev the engine in in the showroom yeah. as well. I mean, it's so done so many things so in, right. You don't get that in Forza Horizon or the no. Crew, for example. I mean, a lot of people will say, um, "Do we need this game in light of the Crew and, and Forza Horizon?" And the answer is absolutely yes, we do, because it's a different beast altogether. Mm. Uh, so you know, you, you even had to find the dealerships; they weren't oh, yeah, given to you. So the reward and exploration, you know, so um, brilliant system. So basic though, um, but brilliant. And you know, I, I mean, if I was to review Test Drive Limited Two, I probably wouldn't give it as a, a massively high score because it does have a lot of shortcomings. But um, I, I don't the think bugs that... when it came out. I think I, I barely played that game because it was broken for about two months online. Yeah, on, some, on PlayStation yeah. at least. That's my, that's my memory of Test Drive Unlimited. <laughs> yeah, the servers were sort of touch and go from Atari. Um, they could be down for months at a time as well, later into the game's uh, life. But, mm. uh, you know, it's an incredible game. Like you say, you, you go into the showrooms, you can drive the car for two minutes. And, and it was like you had to save up money, lots and lots of money to get the best car. So what you do is you go around in your Golf and then you'd sort of go into a test drive uh, location test drive a Ferrari or something and just think, oh, mate, if I, when I, I've got to play this more and more, once I get here, I can afford this car. And there mm. won't be a two minute limit on it. I'll be able to drive <laughs> it wherever I want. And it had this social aspect, which was phenomenal as well. You can just drive around with random people, uh, join cruises and stuff, as well mm. as all the, uh, that's all the off cut so I think stuff, that's but... what they wanted the crew to be really, wasn't it? This online multiplayer experience, we could just go for, uh, just explore the world, go for test drives with other players. Mm. They didn't quite work. They didn't quite have the same vibe to it somehow. No, I felt especially it was too the sequel. Com yeah, too convoluted. Get me you know? on the sequel. Yeah, the, even like the upgrade system uh, was just too confusing. The way you you gain parts and I mean, in yeah, test drive it was very simple. Number two, it was just a case of you had a few parts that you could install uh, two or three upgrades on, yeah. and that was it. Obviously, we expect more comprehensive tuning mode on a modern game, but. I don't feel like they have to do anything outstanding to, to get this right. You know, as long as it's a big one-to-one -one scale map, which we informed it is. Yeah. Um, upgraded physics, graphics, of course. Uh, social online elements as well. We know that there's avatar stuff, customization, which you'll remember in the, the second title. Mm. A lot of people weren't, weren't a fan of, of that. Yeah, being brought they, in they, the they really did hone in on the whole kind of lifestyle mm. aspect, didn't they, more? Yeah, so. it, it was like the millionaire simulator. That's what it was like. <laughs> or probably I, I just remember the, the awful character models. <laughs> they've, probably yeah. not, they've probably not aged very well now. <laughs> um, I mean, they've have they even confirmed it's going to be set on an island again? 
Uh, apparently, it's a one-to-one -one scale environment. Right. So we can only assume it's yeah a small, but you know, big in, in the game world terms, but small obviously yeah. in geographical terms. But I mean, they said people have been be, speculating. They said there'll be a variety of things to do, which gives us a lot. As of it building. always is. Yeah. <laughs> It's very sort of uh, slim pickings, isn't it, mm. on the reveal? But it's in good hands with Alan Jarnu. They yeah. did work on the first two games. He's the lead on, on the new one. So I do hope that is that, that is true, though, because with uh, some of the recent open world titles, like The Crew, for example, I, I do find there's just not enough enough to do within the open world. Um, mm. There's not enough activities or just random, um, you know, like one to one races you can do, you know, stuff like that. So I, I do hope they. Um, there's enough there to keep you occupied, which I'm sure there will be based on the series history anyway. It's and, a tricky um, one to get right. I mean, the crew introduced all these sort of on-road obstacles, which I actually turned off because I felt like there was too much to do in a sense. Yeah, it it is, was too yeah. cluttered, you know? So there's, they have to strike a balance between uh, not over-cluttering stuff, mm. but giving people enough stuff mm. to, to keep things It's different because a lot, a lot of modern gamers now, let's be honest, don't have high attention spans. Very true. And this is my worry. Will yeah. it become another Falls of Horizon where they're gifting you? Exactly, yeah. I mean, if it does turn out that way, I'm just going to, I don't know, I'm going to probably just drive the cars in order of their horsepower <laughs> from small to, to big, mm. you know, and, and just make my own sort of game out of it. Mm. Uh, if that's the case, get your own sort of fun out of it. And, and But they did mention that there's a lot of freedom in this game, like there has been in, in previous titles. So I imagine that, that they're going to give you your own path to, to what <clears> you want to do. So... I have faith, but you know, like you say, with the modern generation of gamers, there is that doubt and that that sort of in the back of my mind that maybe mm. they might ruin the formula. No fault of the developer, of course, but it's just the market that they're having to appease. So mm. fingers crossed. But I think though, if if nothing else, I think it's um, you know, Killerton have really proved themselves to be um, you know, a really respectable developer over the years. You know, they've, they've really transformed Only... the VR series and made it yeah. their own. And it's only in recent years, really, we've seen that mm. massive jump. Um, when, you think comes back down to, to, when you think back to their first game being Motorcycle Club, for example. Which which was god-awful, wasn't it? Yes. I, I, liked, I liked the system in place. I like the um, the originality of the system where you can change bikes, but yeah, it was it fell flat on its face, mm. didn't it? Um, but they've learned so much. Mm. So uh, they've got a really then. good foundation to build on. I mean, the Killerton engine looks stunning in titles like WRC9 and uh, TT Isle of Man. Mm. Um, I I do just think they've I just think they've announced the game just a bit too early because I did find the the reveal and the the trailer just very underwhelming because they just showed so little. I mean, the trailer was basically just a close up of a door. Mm. Um, <laughs> and that yeah. was it. And they've, yeah, I, I think they could. I think they should have waited to really sort of, you know, blow us away with the reveal. Because I, I would normally agree, I'll, but I'm, I'm going to have to disagree here because I feel like they're because it's an old dormant title uh, franchise that they're building that excitement, mm. um, even if it's a year or two away. I feel like this was probably a good move in a sense, just to build that that hype. Yeah, I mean, people are very hyped for this. Uh, a lot of people they probably don't know much about Killerson Racing, to be fair. No, it's true. But because we know they're, they're one of those developers that's really sort of come good in the last few years, especially um, that sort of upward trajectory, it makes us hopeful for this one. Mm. So I just remember they really built up the reveal of the trailer, so I think that got people's expectations quite high. Yeah. Um, so yeah. it made you think there'll be some sort of you know gameplay reveal or just just something a little bit more. Um, because they did I seem to remember they did announce the game quite early on before the reveal trail, like a year, even a year or two, just that it was in development. So I don't yeah. know, I, I, I found it a bit underwhelming myself, but I do agree they, they need to they need to build up the hype and everything, but they really are drip feeding us at the moment with info on that one. Um yeah. But all the same, it's still one of our it's easily one of our most anticipated um, racing games of twenty twenty one and beyond. So, oh yes, I'm sure it'll be worth the wait. Fingers so. crossed. So, sticking with the theme of open world racing games, we also have a new Need for Speed on the horizon. Um, well, we don't know for sure when it's going to be an open world game, but obviously the last few titles have been, so it most likely will. So, this new Need for Speed game is being developed by Criterion. Now, this is the first time they've. Uh, handled a Need for Speed game since Most Wanted back in I believe 2012. I'm a, I'm a massive fan of Criterion Game. I've always loved their work. Big Burnout fan. Mm. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see what direction they'll take the series in. 
Um, cause again, we don't have, well, we don't have really anything to go at the moment. It's just announced. Um, I think they show, they revealed a very brief teaser video just showing off the, some of the car models, which look very pretty indeed, very detailed. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the cars we can see obviously has aftermarket parts on it. So yeah, it does look like they'll be at least sticking to the customization theme. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That was a strong suit. Yeah. In, in the recent games, obviously a different developer, but they were showing off the load times as well. Um, mm -hmm. It will load faster. No, we don't say. <laughs> uh, but yeah, very little to go on. But um, I, I don't know. I've got mixed feelings about this. Um, I mean, I, I love the Burnout games, don't get me wrong, but I didn't fall in love with the Need for Speed titles from Criterion, I have to say. Uh, I felt, I mean, I might have been suffering from a bit of Need for Speed burnout, if you pardon the pun. <laughs> but I don't know. I just felt the magic was in the earlier titles, uh, mm -hmm. like Underground, um, the original Most Wanted from 2005. Uh, as well as sort of undercover and that weren't so great, but Pro Street and yeah, they were okay. Um, the later titles I didn't really fall in love with. Um, so for me, Criterion's main strength was was in its definitely in its burnout titles rather than Need oh, for Speed, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, because they, they were obviously restricted to what they could do because there was obviously restrictions on having licensed cars and obviously they couldn't destroy them quite as much as they could in burnout. Yeah, very true. And Criterion's very good at crashing cars, is what I'm trying mm. to say. And, and um, in a way, I was also a little bit disappointed because, in my opinion, Ghost, Ghost Games just got up to their stride with Heat. Mm. I, I enjoyed Heat, mm. you know, sort of a good solid 7 out of 10, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, mm. Whereas Need for Speed 2015 and, and 2017's Payback, mm -hmm. uh, not great, to say the least. Mm. Um, but I just I, felt I like think, they just, Rivals just got it. Races. And then... Yeah. It's a shame. It's a shame. I know what you mean. Yeah, it's a shame. Mm. It's the same with Killerton, in a way, with the WRC series. You know, they've got a couple more titles left, but then... The keys Code are going Masters. to be taken from Codemasters mm. soon. However, I mean, that might be an exciting thing. They're not going to drop the, the rally game, surely, uh, Killerton. So it will give them more freedom to, mm. to put in different uh, tracks and, and cars. You know, they can really go to town on that without that sort of restriction of the license. Yeah. But fortunately, in recent years, having a license is not as restrictive as it once was. So there are more freedoms now, having said that. So mm. it'd be interesting to see what Codemasters does with that license. But... Are we excited for Need for Speed? I mean, I, I'm cautiously excited, but it's it's once again you're going back to that developer that has to start from scratch again. Yeah, it's 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 really hard to predict what direction it's going to be in because I feel like the last where are we four games from Ghost Games they pretty much tried almost every direction they could really. I mean, Rivals and, was basically a hot pursuit sequel in all but name, yeah. which I, I actually think is quite an under underrated game. And they collaborated, didn't they, with rivals between the two studios, in fact, uh, mm. Criterion and Ghost Games. So yeah. sort of a mesh between the two. So wasn't keen on the Need for Speed reboot game. No, no. Solus, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, probably set you... at night. Yeah. Um, did I you mean, play I'm... much of Payback at all? No, I mean, that should, I. Be, that should be right <laughs> on my... <laughs> I mean, Payback should be right up my street because it was all about, you know, cinematic... Uh, you know, driving action, which is, mm. you know, exactly my thing. But um, nah, I, I just remember the lot, the world just being a bit, the open world being a bit lifeless. Obviously, mm. you had the controversial cards system where you had to, I forget how it works now, but you had to um, earn cards to unlock different parts, I think. Um, there's microtransactions galore. Um, mm. For a game called Need for Speed, there was no sense of speed whatsoever. Um, and all of the cinematic set pieces are all just cutscenes in reality. Mm. So yeah. disappointing game. And then, yeah, I, I would say they kind of won back um, people's trust with Need for Speed Heat. Mm -hmm. um, in many ways, it was almost like a greatest hits compilation of past Need for Speed games. You had the yeah. customization element, you had the cops versus racers. That was it, it felt sort of pre-Rivals era, didn't it? It, mm. it, it sort of harking back to that, those days where I personally enjoyed the series the most so and actually i would enjoy mm. heat uh taking those cues so mm. yeah it's a shame that they, they just find their stride and and then you know away goes the license i just wonder how many titles it would take for criterion to get it spot on yeah. will it take two or three or will they get it uh, yeah. from the first will they stick with what they know and make a kind of new hot pursuit sequel yeah what yeah. is need for speed is the question because no yeah. one knows because yeah. it doesn't really have an identity does it it's, it's well, changed throughout we've the had years the, you had the hot pursuit remaster release last year as well so a, mm. a new hot pursuit wouldn't feel that fresh somehow no no well they can't do it now can they so, i'm interested to see where they done. take it mm. 
Um, I mean, my, my, my guess is we'll probably see more of it um, sort of E3 time mm-hmm. this year. That's what that's what traditionally happens with Need for Speed games. Yeah, the trailer's released around E3 and then it gets released around November. So depending, yeah. of course, if the pandemic has obviously caused any disruption, it should hopefully be out towards the end of the year, but we'll see. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, interested to see how Need for Speed will transition to the next generation of consoles, really. Again, if they can nail the open worlds with you know 4K, 60 frames and all of that. And I guess we Rivals was cross-generational, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? Yeah. So I assume we can uh, assume something similar here as well. Mm-hmm. well. Obviously, Criterion is a very small team now. Mm. Um, a lot of the developers um, left to form other studios, such as Freefield Studio. Yeah. And um, I like what you did there. <laughs> one of my personal most anticipated games of 2021 is Dangerous Driving 2. So I feel like the first game really fell under a lot of people's radar. Is a an indie title developed by Freefields. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a small studio based in the UK, founded by uh, the former developers of um, Criterion, uh, Alex Ward and Fiona Sperry. Uh, they worked on all of the old Burnout titles. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I think Burnout One to Revenge, and then and they also did Paradise. Um, so they, they were sort of gradually building up to the first dangerous driving game because you had you had Dangerous Golf. Which was basically crash mode, but with yeah, golf. Yeah. Novelty idea. I quite, quite enjoyed it as a pick up and play title. Yeah, and just to show off its damage model, wasn't it? It was like it, was, a, it felt like a tech, tech demo. demo. It was yeah, basically a yeah. tech demo, but a fun yeah. one, a destructive one. But I uh, found that those destructive elements didn't really um, make it into the, the the first dangerous drive, and I felt that like they sort of skimped a bit on on the actual deformation mm. and stuff the use of sparks and smoke just maybe just you know like a smoke mm. and mirrors effort to mask the lack of damage but i mean it was a bit here and there but i just felt mm. that they maybe they could step it up for the sequel mm. well, i mean master dangerous golf you had uh dangerous zone which was crash mm-hmm. mode um, again a sort of tech demo as well wasn't it really yeah but they did a sequel to that and then they finally got to dangerous driving which was basically um almost like a spiritual successor to burnout free mm. Um, with well, there, were, there was no crash mode, um, <laughs> but I, I enjoyed Dangerous Driving for what it was. You have to remember it was it was only developed by about seven people, so I think yeah, when you consider yeah. that, it was it's a pretty you know solid achievement. Mm. Um, for me, it just it really brought back that intensity from Burnout yeah. that a lot yeah. of modern arcade races have been lacking. You know, when I play Forza, I don't think my pulse really goes any higher. <laughs> In Forza Horizon, you know, but just that sense of speed, sense of intensity, and just you know, just weaving through traffic actually felt dangerous. Um, but it's just limited, unfortunately, by you know the fact it was developed by a small team. So, like you said, the, yeah. for a game that's all about destruction, the damage modeling was unfortunately a bit underwhelming, mm. which is a shame. But it just game... goes to show how difficult it is to to, to get mm. the the funding and, and you know technology in place of having to do all these stepping stones just to get to this sort of fairly basic racer albeit a decent yeah. racer but it's still pretty much uh it's underpinnings are pretty bit basic uh but you know they're, they're having to, to do all these release all these games just to get to this point mm. uh that shows you how tough it is so well, I mean, uh, they've, been they working, keep... they've been working on the sequel for quite a long time so mm. I mean, they don't reveal a lot though I mean, we know there's some sort of open world mode mm. um and there's a few other little tidbits but we, mm. we don't know an awful lot at all do we so, I mean, Dangerous Driving was like a, a spiritual successor to Burnout 3. But yeah. Being set in an open world, Dangerous Driving 2 sounds like it's trying paradise. to be a new Burnout Paradise. Is yeah. That right? And what a good game that was. Mm, one of the, wow. the best arcade races of all time, as far as I'm concerned. Burnout 3 just overtakes it for, for me. For sheer fun. Yeah. But Crazy that could be factor. another pod. I could talk about that for an entire other podcast, probably. Yeah. So, Dangerous Driving 2, we, we don't know an awful lot about it yet, but they have confirmed it's going to be uh, set in an open world. A very large open world as well. They made some quite bold claims about it, haven't they? Apparently it's bigger than Paradise, isn't it? I think Paradise mm. is 20 square miles. 25, I think this one is. Uh, so slightly bigger than Paradise, which is amazing so when you consider the very small team. They're claiming the open world is going to have 400 square kilometres. Yeah. So that sounds like you know, quite a bit bigger than Paradise, which is impressive yeah. for a indie about developer. Two, 248 miles, something like that, but... Yeah, it's, it's incredible, isn't it? It just goes to show how far development has come that you can do such a large environment with a small team mm. uh, once you've, of course, had the funding in place and the technology with it. So, 
looking forward to this. It could be a, a sleeper hit, couldn't it, amongst uh, I just hope titles? That, I just hope it's not perhaps too ambitious for such mm. a small team, because the first game was a bit buggy sometimes, shall we say. It definitely, it definitely lacked a bit of polish sometimes. Um, don't get me wrong, I still enjoyed it. I still had a lot of fun with it. Very difficult, though, actually. It's probably one of the hardest games I've ever platinumed. Some of the... <laughs> I, I've got bad memories of some of the Eliminator events in that game, especially the one where you, you end up driving these kind of Formula One star cars. You just needed insanely fast reaction times, yeah, and, and luck with and luck with the AI as well. Because they they brought a new uh, update, didn't they, where they increased the speed it, up? Yeah, yeah. They, yeah. They, they they toned down the difficulty slightly, which was, actually was that was, a class of it. was that a separate mode or was it across the whole game where they increased the speed? I think it was across the whole game. They did some that other is, things. That's as well. a very bold move, isn't it? I don't believe I've, I've ever seen that uh, in a previous that's, game. Yes, I think um, when they first fundamentally, the, I think I think that was before the game came out. They had they had some teaser videos, and then they announced after that they would actually increased the speed of the game. Oh, I see. Um, so it's a pre-release yeah. update. Yeah. Okay. It was probably a bit too difficult sometimes. I think the sequel. I think they need to make, need to make it tone it down accessible. a bit. Yeah. 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 My only concern is that it might just be a bit too ambitious for a small team. But mm. what I do like the sound of, though, because with Burnout Paradise, I wasn't necessarily too keen on the the actual structure of the races because yeah, you know, it was it was fun to drive around and find events and explore the world with other players. But when you when yeah. when you got down to the actual racing, it was a bit hard to find the finish line. Sometimes I don't have the best <laughs> sense of direction at the best of times. So oh, I'm not any better. Let me tell you, but. <laughs> I guess there's parallels there between uh, Test Drive uh, Unlimited as well, because the, the most fun was the exploration and driving around at your mm. own leisure, smashing through things in the case of Paradise uh, and all that good stuff. Uh, when it came down to the racing, Test Drive was very basic. Mm. Um, you know, it used uh, obviously the road network as its sort of infrastructure for, for the race circuits. And it wasn't fantastic, shall we say. No. Uh, so I guess a sim similar vibe with Paradise, but it's... I don't think that the actual racing, it's going to sound crazy, but I don't think that's the m most important thing. As long as they can give you an entertaining open world that mm. you can explore at your leisure and has plenty of things to do, find, um, then, you know, it's, it's going to be a good title. Mm. The racing is almost secondary to the exploration side of it when, when it comes to open world. Mm. But uh, what, what I like about Dangerous Driving too, though, is that it does do that combined because it's open world, but you have to find the events. And then mm. I, I believe the actual races are a bit like they were in Burnout free just point to point or circuit laps so there's yeah. no getting lost in the open world so <laughs> i think that's a good compromise myself mm. as long as like you said the world itself is fun to explore it rewards you for your exploration mm. as well that's very important but i expect they will because Burn burnout paradise had you know, loads of things to find didn't it oh I, I never finished it put it that way no, it I, I never got all the gates or the no um no. What else was there billboards billboards yeah yeah <laughs> secret um locations yeah yeah crazy right. crazy amount of stuff they just need to adopt that model much like test drive need to adopt the old model mm. and then it's going to be a surefire hit um in terms of its ambition i i'm sort of in the camp where i'd rather a team tries to go ambitious and, and get it slightly short rubbish. rather than do it safe i felt like gt sport played it too safe yeah. Uh, when it start, when it launched, it had no weather or time. Of, I think it might have had time of day. I'm not sure. It might have been pre-baked, uh, but it was very. Um, they played it so safe, didn't they? So they they nailed what they had, but it was just too safe for me. So uh, much like Project Cars, it was over ambitious in a way. But um, mm. for me, that's one of the games of, of of last gen for me because it had that ambition. And yes, it wasn't perfect. It was far from perfect, but it, it got it right most of the way. Uh, and for that, I can't really fault it, you know. So mm. I'm, I'm hoping that, even though they have a small team, I'm hoping that, that Free Fields can, can, you know, try to put something special together mm. that does showcase their talents, you know, because they've been very patient in, in releasing these other games that are the stepping stones to, to, to really put out something that they really can get behind. And Yeah, I mean, Danger Drive was the game they, they wanted to make initially, but obviously they just didn't have the funds to do it, so they had to make some smaller games to, you mm. know, make money basically yeah to survive yeah it really is a case of survival it's been quite i mean there were there was a point where they're were, they were releasing games and even developing games every few months and all yeah. suddenly there's been quite a big gap i mean dangerous driving came out in uh i believe 2019 mm. um and we, they still haven't shown any gameplay at dangerous driving too which is a bit worrying i would say don't be worried because it's the pandemic is, is probably largely mm. uh, a result of that but 
yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing these uh, first screens and the first mm. bit of gameplay just to see if they're sort of trying to, to, to put a, they did a show um, They did show a demo at uh, PAX last year, a show in America. That's right. I, I, I yeah. did read the blog. I couldn't see any footage, though, sadly. I but, saw a uh, few sneaky off-screen videos that they probably weren't allowed to film. Oh, OK. Um, didn't show much, to be honest. It was just like a one-to-one -one race, I think. But the, the damage did look better than the first game. They have already cool. confirmed that they will improve it. It's not going to be wreck fest levels or destruction all stars, obviously. Hmm. Um, but as long as it's improved, because yeah, that, that element was lacking for me in the first game, I must admit. Um, but yeah, it could be one to watch, I would say. Last we heard, it was supposed to come out in spring, but I don't think that's going to happen now, just based on their silence and obviously the pandemic. Hopefully, maybe later this year, possibly. Originally, it was going to be a last generation title. It was that's right. They haven't confirmed the platform. They haven't confirmed so. if it's going to. Be, well, they confirmed when it was announced. They confirmed it was going to be out for PS4, Xbox One, PC, and Switch. Uh, that's point. Mm. That's, that'll be the first time the series has been on Switch as well, which would be interesting. Yeah. Originally, it was supposed to come out uh, last Christmas. Really? So yeah. yeah so so plans will no doubt delayed. change. Yeah. I mean, I hear PS4 versions and I sort of gloss over. My eyes just sort of, you know, it's like, I'm not interested in PS4 anymore. <laughs> I want my good upgraded PS5 mm, version. So I don't care game, about PS4. So I hope the game doesn't suffer in that regard, if it, mm. if it is still just a last-gen only game. Yeah, will it be shackled down to, to that? Because it has to run then on the OG. But, yeah. I mean, more and more developers are giving people choices between resolution and frame rate. Yeah, uh, something we've seen on, on the Xbox for a while now, but uh, it's, you know, we're starting to see it more and more on PlayStation now. It's becoming the standard, so um, no doubt they can turn up the settings on, on their sequel here and, and make it shine on, on the new consoles as it should. Mm. Well, I say, I mean, the new hardware could hopefully improve the game and open up more possibilities. Yeah, I mean, we're probably gonna have to wait a couple of years really to get true current oh, gen yeah. games, so yeah. It is what it is right now. It's just a bit of a, a waiting game before we mm. really get our amazing racing titles. Um, but it's interesting to, to play a game like WRC9 with virtually no loading times. You know, it gives mm. you a sort of window into the future, mm -hmm. uh, which is fantastic. So, yeah, looking forward to this game, looking forward to seeing uh, screenshots and stuff. And, yeah. and what are they going to do with that scale of map that's on Paradise um, or bigger scale? You know, are they going to really mm. pack it full of stuff? I'll be looking forward to seeing that. Uh, really is shrouded in mystery at the moment. But, mm -hmm. uh, obviously, As are yeah. a lot of these games, actually. Yes, yeah, admittedly. Uh, but... Such is the way of the world right now. But yeah, definitely one to watch um, this year, that's for sure. I think that about does it, to be honest. Um, is yeah. there any other racer games you're anticipating that we haven't covered? I mean, there's a few annual titles um, that, you know, we expect incremental updates. There's nothing too exciting on, on those fronts. Um, in terms of new IPs, we're still waiting for, for new stuff to come along. But like we say, it could be a couple of years before we, we really get into this current gen and, and, and see these new IPs come out. Mm. And no doubt we'll probably see old IPs as well that, that, that have laid dormant for years now coming back. Mm. Um, you know, like Killerton have, have re revised uh, a couple of recent years. So who knows what's going to happen? Maybe THQ will have something up their sleeves. I know they've got loads of new games coming out. Um, who knows? I'm looking forward to seeing what, what the current gen is. But I want to see new IPs. I want to see mm. something fresh something that we haven't seen before that utilizes the, the, the current tech. Uh, so no doubt, you know, this new, these new consoles will, will really sort of blow open the doors for developers and they'll be able to attack things that, that they haven't previously been able to do. So I want to see new development techniques. I want to see new gameplay elements this gen and um, stable games as well. 60 frames as a minimum. Uh, I'm not too bothered about 4K resolution. Checkerboard is fine for me as long as the games are stable um and who knows what we're going to see i mean destruction all stars is, is pretty random to start off with isn't it so <laughs> it can only get better hopefully as well mm. so you mentioned dormant franchises mm. i just want a new driver game oh he's done it he's mentioned the driver game he had he to knew get this is going to happen yeah but, uh, but hear me out this is the perfect year because it's the 10th anniversary of driver san francisco at the very least we deserve a driver san francisco remaster Yes. The burnout can have one, and Need for Speed can have one, and so can Driver. Yeah. See, what's so annoying? Ubisoft Reflections, they know that people want a new Driver game. They even make fun of us on Twitter. <laughs> have you seen their Twitter lately? They just... Um, yeah, I've seen... <laughs> yeah. I've like, seen well, here the comes driver. the Driver fans again, whenever they uh, mention about new games. So there is a demand for it. But mm. they just pretend the series doesn't exist anymore. 
and it's really frustrating. I don't know if that's a good sign or not. When they when they pretend things don't exist, it might mean that they're working it's on weird. something. But who knows? Mm. So that's my but, most anticipated game of twenty twenty one, the Driver San Francisco remaster. But that's probably just which was thinking. so original at the time. This is what I want to see on the on the current gen. Something mm. that's so different from anything we've seen before. Um, and that was a sixty frames game as well, and it had all these amazing exactly. elements. Car switching on the fly. Incredible mm. what they achieved back then in 2011, mm. 10 years ago. So we want to see something better. Yeah, I mean, just like hands. the first game, very ahead of its time. You know, mm. Driver introduced 3D open wheel driving and then Driver in San Francisco really innovated it again with its yeah. shift mechanic. And if we're sticking on the theme, there was rumours going back a few years ago that uh, Rockstar could be making a new Midnight Club game. Yeah. So I'm wondering if that will ever see the light of day. Who knows? Is there really a market for that, though, where you have the new test drive and the crew and Forza Horizon? It would, again, it would really have to do something to stand out. Because I remember, yeah. I seem to remember the last game wasn't, it was fairly well received, but I don't, I don't think it, uh, I don't think it did that well commercially. Mm. What was it, Los Angeles? Uh, yes. Yeah, it would have been Los Angeles. Yeah. Mm. Um, it's been over 10 years now god. yeah and god that's that's very basic when you look back on it now it's it's mm. it's you know really terribly basic but it's the sort of game that that has potential that they could uh, revise but along with you know a few others like driver as we mentioned but, mm. but so it'd be nice to see old titles come back but also new i'm interested in, in new stuff as well so yeah we're about to have you know, new wrc games new f1 games yeah um, it's pretty standard fare, isn't it? We expect yeah. uh, these games every year, so we're not we're not terribly excited about them because they're, they're only small updates. Usually, yeah. uh, there are exceptions, of course, but um, yeah. These are yeah. destruction all stars going back to the start again. You know, it's a new IP, mm -hmm. more potential. You know, I just hope it has that kind of um, it relives that next gen experience and delivers something that you just think isn't possible on the old hardware. Just want to see new experiences. Yeah, but at the same time, I also want a new driver game. So. <laughs> and on that, on that note I think it's time to end uh, yeah thank you very much for listening to our the first episode of Racing Game Rambles if you enjoyed it do please subscribe to the Will Spin Gaming YouTube channel and uh, hopefully this will be up on other podcast channels Spotify, iTunes etc listen to it as well that's all for now thanks again for listening and we'll see you again next time bye for now <laughs>